Um, yeah, so for those who somehow missed the previous map, it was a 7-0. In they probably did. They thought it was going to go on for a little bit yeah. longer. It could have been late, and all of a sudden the game's over. It included the uh, second ace of the whole tournament, the second defuse of the whole tournament, and the first interrogation, which wasn't done by the team that won. It was done by the same round that the second ace was done. It went interrogation, and then the thermite on the other team went, having none of this fragged everybody um within range thatcher is the first removal there from elevate and now it is down to lanchados to respond elevate were the team that pulled the seven off now we see them in the defense we've only seen one round of that and honestly it came down to a 1v1 a 1v2 even so and that's you know could a be few of the rounds did a few of the rounds somehow fumbled their way to 1v1s or one V2s. Two notable ones being the attempted defuse clutch and then the maestro. Mm -hmm. Um and I still don't have words. I've forgotten words. Good for you. Oh. So Elevate now. They move on to their final ban, and well, already Cabotau Mira bans. That's uh, honestly great from Lanchados because Cabotau is an operator that we know that Elevate they like to bring. That's in their back pocket. We've seen that quite a lot, of course, in, in Clubhouse where they were bringing that operator. And well, Mira, which actually managed to slip through uh, the banning phase of Clubhouse, but didn't see any play, which may be another reason why kind of Lanchados had a, had a very poor half whenever the operator course is available and open. Uh, but this time, of course, on Mira, where she's really strong in this operator with the kind of off-sites that you can do and the clear lines of sight that you can bring to the table. And really, Mira in this map is all about killing your opponents before they even get anywhere near the bomb site. It's not really played as like an anchor operator. It's used in the aggressive frag heavy kind of style. Well, we will see if they can find a way to make it through. Maestro is removed this time. Saw a lot of play in the previous game, and the cameras became a little bit of a thorn in the sides of Elevate, at least in terms of information when we got close. Valkyrie is swapped to from Legion, get themselves some aggressive portable information from multiple different sides. And again, what we saw previously from that, um, from Elevate and well, I guess especially from Elevate, was a very aggressive defense. Whether it was just because they were 6-0 and wanted to have some fun that round, or they just felt that confident they wanted to try and take every single window possible, they refused to try and let Lanchados inside the building. And if I'm completely honest, I feel like that's what we're about to see again, bolstered by the fact that they have Valkyrie. So, Elevate... Their first defense, aggressive one at that, not bringing, you know, for example, uh, the Echo, which we would kind of associate with a much more passive and anchor style play. They're bringing the Dock along with the Valkyrie, so there probably will be some aggressive moments. If you know, whenever you see the Dock, Dock's not an anchor operator, Dock is the frag operator. That's how he's described. Yes, he's a heavy. He, you know, the whole kit kind of screams Roamer, but he wasn't really designed that way, was he? Yeah, I mean, the thing about it is if you ever see a Doc, they're normally one of the best players or they're a new player. It's like seeing Rook. It's like if you if you come across a rogue Rook, they're normally either a god-tier aimer that is just out there for blood um, or, well, there goes the opening frag, Levi drops a lot. Uh, from this aggressive Valkyrie just running outside, uh, it seems. Um, or they are someone that is new to the game and learning it. With Doc, you take that gun set, you take that mentality, and you add the fact that you can heal yourself whilst you're on the roam to kind of help assist you take multiple fights, which a lot of other roamers cannot do. So instead of the portability uh, of having the abilities, Levi just running out again and running out again um, to get the third as he just stays run out. If he gets this man on the rappel, I swear. <laughs> Are you serious, Levi? Yeah, this is no longer uh, a competitive game. This is uh, ranked. I've never cast it ranked. Have you Le cast it ranked? No, Levi doesn't want to enter the building again. Uh, I don't know what we can say. Like, what can we say? If if they get another one. <sighs> <laughs> oh, this is this is too much to deal with. This is way too much. Like, 
Like, you know, this is that Simpsons meme where they're killing the Hamburglar and they're saying, stop, stop. He's had enough. He's that, already dead. He's already dead. Um, this is that again. Levi has now opted for the Rook, as we said. This is what players bring when they want to frag. Never usually in comp. Let me emphasize that. Only purely normally in ranked. Because the shields, the kind of chest armor doesn't offer a huge amount really to a lot of playstyles. Um, has swapped off of it to Lysian, so maybe he isn't going to go for the double up of the French ACOGs. No, isn't. But they do obviously have the castle. They still have the singular French ACOG in Cyprus, and they're going to opt for Vent Workshop. So they're at least keeping the standard point. I just don't know why Lanchinos aren't picking four shields right here. Yeah. Just sitting spawn, boys. <laughs> Honestly, that's probably the way to do it, is sit and spawn and let Levi basically throw himself at you. Yeah, well, that was the thing, because we saw, obviously, on Clubhouse, we saw one defensive round uh, on the side of Elevate. Um, oh, oh, we're just going to quickly jump to camera. There's a technical problem. Intriguing. Um, we'll just get that sorted out. Um, we saw one defensive round on Clubhouse. Mm -hmm. One defensive round on Clubhouse. Yep. And they were playing it aggressively. Mm -hmm. They weren't running around outside. Wasn't mm. that level of aggression. But they were close to. And I guess we'll see as we jump back in if that's what happens we just, again. Chat, we just needed to remind you what we look like because you'll probably be seeing us very soon. Yeah, next time you see us... the Game. We'll see you in about 10 minutes. Don't worry. And it won't be a technical issue. It'll just be the game's over. <laughs> At this point, you've kind of, like... We can always kind of wax lyrical about what a team can do to respond uh, to what a team's doing and how a team can kind of cope. And yeah, in a weird way, the best way is to bring shields, wait for them to throw themselves at you and pick one or two kills. As I tried to say before the unfortunate pause, that was almost what they managed to do on Clubhouse and why it went down a little bit to the wire in the two versus one situation because they let Elevate kind of swing at them and manage to find some of the bodies in and amongst that. If they can milk that again in this second round, again, find one or two bodies from the really super aggressive plays of Elevate, they, who knows whether they can pull around from that again. But that's the only response I can really think of. Because I don't think a change in operator selection, I don't think a change in how they're kind of, where they're pushing from or whether they're going aggressive or defensive and that kind of balance of how they get when they get in the building, is it? It's a waiting game for me, for them. Zion tried the classic impact attention and try and spawn kill them at Valley, and it didn't work. And like we kind of said, really for lunch, though, it's just let Elevate push into you and... Levi's took the bait that C4 gets tossed over, and that will nail the Ash, and even downs the firm of arrow Zion swinging on in. Wow, impressive already from Elevate to even capitalize on that little mistake that we did see Levi make. Well, Cypress is now looking for anyone that might be pushing on the opposite side, but Zoe does find Mitty in the meantime again. This is the one thing that we said they could kind of do. Wait outside, let them push you, because at this point, that's all Elevator trying. Do they hear the picking up? Manages to get one, but there's the cover, saves the life of the two people. And there goes the castle. Four, two. How can you make this into a round, Will? Uh, round win, Lanchados. You've got to double up. You've got to find yourself, find your sense of security, treat this as the three-minute mark in a weird way in the beginning of a round, and go with what your plan would be against a team on this caliber. Yeah, just imagine that you have a great advantage now and you're ready to uh, rock and roll, but they're just going to throw it away as quick as we've seen them kind of push that. Well, a minute to go. And honestly, I still don't think that Elevate are going to let this slip. I still feel they're going to let this happen because Lanchados, they're making some questionable movements. Oh, oh, oh hell! Another ace! This is... Uh, I'm done. I'm done for the night. You can still look ass. You don't need me. Third ace. Third ace of the entire season. Second in this pair of games. They had a 4-2. They had a 4-2 because they stepped back. They waited, they let them be speak, uh, peaked upon, and then they 
capitalized upon that. And they're in a 4-2. And at that point, you could see the two last players of Elevate slowed their play style and held angles. And then Lanchinos <laughs> walked three people, one at a time, through the main door. And I don't know why. They had the advantage. They had double the men, even if, even if they pushed in through detention and took it as trades and took control of the opposite side of the building and got that last man out. Yes, they might have lost one, maybe two in the crossfire, but then they would have brought it to a 2-1 at worst. But then they all just entered the same way where they knew that there was at least two guns. I love the way that you're still surprised after what they've already displayed to us. So, Elevate, <laughs> how well do you want to boost your stats for this competition? Like, I'm just, who do, who do, let me, let me just have a look at some quick stuff. What just, are you looking at? I'm going to quickly just have a very, mm -hmm. a very quick gander at who Elevate potentially have next. Yeah. Um, they've got Ints next. And yeah. that is going to be a bit of a rude awakening, I think, for them. Because if they're expecting the competition to be like this... Because let's be real here. Elevate aren't playing their game right now. At the very, very beginning, they might have been. But at times, it was sloppy. Their defensive rounds so far... This isn't them playing. This is them just... You know, messing around, having a good time, and being a bit silly with it. Then they're going to set up against Ints. And I feel like that's going to be a bit of an issue. You have to remember, during like the first round, like the first couple of rounds for Elevate against Lanchados, they were playing structured. Whenever they knew that they could just run riot against Lanchados, which is exactly what they're doing now, they're just going full rank star mode. Like, this isn't, they're not even trying. They're just running at them and trying to get kills. Literally, who can get the kills first? I'm pretty sure everybody has played a rank game like this, where you just run at them and try and get as many kills as you can. But then, Elevate, they're a professional team. They know what Ints they're like. It, they've had matches against Ints. It's the only team that they actually beat. This is not going to be the true reflection of them against Ints, I can assure you. In a weird way, I'd like to see that game, though. I'd like to see full rank style two pro league teams bash it out. Levi still repeatedly trying to stay outside the building, and Mitty is the first to open up the Franks, this time against Agalina, who opened up the Franks in the previous round. Actually, there's Mitty looking for a second on the same rotation hole. Really hope they don't fall for the same law of siege that they fell for before, where they just kept on running out and re peaking. There oh. is one for Levi. How many times? How many times has he run out of there? Um, he's just done it again, and he's got away with that one. It's it's literally who can get the flashiest kill. That's what I think they're going for. Because you, you've got a real. Well, okay, Slap <laughs> finds Zion, Mitty finds Zowie, well, and there's the big push from Elevate. But you've got to look at it from that point of view. Like at that moment in the round, uh -huh. how many times must he have run out of that door, been detected, and run back? Yeah. The did they not have outside of that did they have any drones around any of the monitors CCTV break room area or the armory area to get a bead on the f a beat on the fact that the door is open you're really malfunctioning right now aren't you i'm i just what i want to know is what lanchados are doing because normally okay let's look at this from cuz we have seen Teams of, like, pro league caliber go up against tier 3 teams before, tier 4 teams before, whatever. We've seen that before. But you can always normally piece together, even in 7-0s, what the other team are doing. Like, yeah. where things are happening, what's going down, and what's going wrong. Lanchados, I cannot work out what they are really doing. In the, in the setup phase, where the drones are being pre-placed... What do you want them to do against Elevate? I want them to at least set up some drones. Okay. Why will drones matter if they are killing you while you're droning in spawn? Because, okay, well, look at that Levi death. The one that's got me so kind of perplexed. Okay, right. Is 
where he was droning, first mm -hmm. of all, he was in the opening of where he can be shot from that run out. A okay. run out which he'd already been detected on at least twice before. Yes. Um, at that point as well, if they'd have had a drone, maybe in Armory, maybe around that top floor, All maybe right. even on the balcony where mm -hmm. it couldn't have been spawn peaked, right. they could have noticed that the door was open. Okay. If they at that point notice that the door is open, and you yeah. know you're Five against seconds. Elevate, which you know are very good gunners, and you know they're doing these aggressive runouts, then yeah. just don't Jack approach that side. All right. They're just going to run out on, on them, I think. That, that's my analysis. Uh, you know, he's opening this wall, so he can run out of it. There, there's my analytic work for you. Now he's reinforced, so he doesn't want to get killed from it. And, like, do you know why he's peeking that? So he can get a kill. Uh, I'm actually just... I'm too good with my analyst, man. Like, if you were to if you were to say to Hell, Hell, why did you open that wall? I guarantee you'll say so I can kill them. Mm -hmm. Guarantee you. That's it. That's gonna, all. You gonna try and oppose me on that one? Or no, do you I'm not. Me? That's because I know what Elevator doing. And yeah, yeah, it's, it's rank stars. Yes. Oh, look, shield. This might actually help them. Well, I say help them. It's, it's just gonna make Elevate more angry. <laughs> What's him, what's him get caught? He's, just ma he's magning them. Oh my. Well, they've got to kill their way. Okay, kill for them. Levi drops. Buriden finds one. They're coming around the uh, back. Yeah, yeah you're, you're a goner. He drop shot with the Montagna, and you miss all of the shots as well. Oh my. He's got. Wait, see, five people will jump at him. Yep, there you go. <laughs> what are we casting? What is this? You're telling me we're in Croatia to cast this? I have never seen... I have never seen somebody bring a Monty and drop shotted <laughs> drop and shots. still missed everything. I have never seen that. Ever. I really know what he's just said. I don't speak Portuguese. I haven't even seen that in like a... An attempt in like a bikini body video or a cooking bra or anything, any like content creators I don't think have ever attempted the Monty drop shot. In a smoke. <laughs> and miss ten bullets. <laughs> I just <laughs> well, they've hit the panic button, they've brought out all of the, the goodies that we call them, the Dokobi and the Lions came out to play. And again, it's just gonna aggravate ele elevate more to be honest. The, the thing is, okay. Do you know what I'm looking forward to? What? The single attack round that Elevate's going to get to really see what they're going to bring. Do you know what I would love to see, and I might have to go back and watch after today's cast, Defender is how the Portuguese streamers and how oh, the yeah. native yeah. streamers are reacting to this yeah. because their reactions are always amazing. They're obviously very fluent in the scene mm. and know all of this. They know Elevate personally. I think might... it's... Uh, I think Meleginian and Retalia is casting this. Yeah. I want to say. Absolutely love those guys, and I w really, really want to see how yeah. they react. I remember to this game. in the the Paris Major show match, Retaliate just was banging me left, right, and center. <laughs> just we were playing Favela, and it was just oh. oh look, he's got the monkey charm as well. Very he's just, fitting. He's just waiting. Oh no, it's not a monkey. It's a no. My photo's a monkey. Oh, it's a doki. No, it's the it's the little um, it's a doki. Army name. It's a doki. Little doki charm. I just seen the ears, and I was like, oh. Levi hasn't even moved from the round starting. Like... He's FK. He might be. He's plugged in his controller. Where is he going? He's gonna go into spawn and... Oh! They got him. They got him. They got him from behind. Buried in. Opens up the frags. They've spawned on the side where it is the hardest to get spawn peaks on them. Wise move. They're learning. They're bringing in the calls. Bringing in the lions. They're doing everything they can to somehow keep a beat on this, and they've pushed directly towards point. They're wasting no time. They've kind of realized how short the game is, and they find a second frag. Lanchados in a 5-3 situation. They're pulling their way across this bottom floor as Mitty and Cypress are looking for a rotate. Finds one, the mozzie that's playing in waiting room, and opens up the side wall to get the second who pushes in. And there is Twitch bringing it back to a 3-3. Almost finds the next one and does as the spare spots come out. And now it's, now it's a one versus... Now it's over. I loved how like hyped you were getting that they got the first two opening frags, and I was still sitting here saying, "Yeah, there's still you know three more guys they need to kill." I want Lancelot to take rounds. Yeah, well, 
again, elevate fans. I'm the, don't take this personally, but I would love Lanchados to take a round or two. Because mm-hmm. for me, that that means that they've won the game emotionally. Yeah, it's like it's like everyone loves an underdog story. This is like a Mighty Ducks kind of thing, but instead of the Mighty Ducks playing another kids team, it's the Mighty Ducks versus an adult NHL team. Mm-hmm. So if you had the choice to either get a pet dragon or Lanchidos to win a round, what would you what would you choose? I think both are as mythical as each you other. You have to choose one. <sighs> get a dragon or get Lanchidos to win a round. If you had the choice. It's, it's honestly tough. Pick. Lanchidos to get around. <laughs> what color dragon do you want? <laughs> <laughs> Lanchidos to get around. Come on, my boys. My boys, Lanchidos, I believe in you. I feel like Veli when he supports NA teams right now. Even when they're against insurmountable odds. You're from the UK. Yeah, I know that, but I'm all behind Lanchidos right now. Why? I don't know. There's something emotional there. Just... <laughs> this isn't an underdog story, by the way. <laughs> it's a massacre. You know, that this is not an underdog. <laughs> To be an underdog, you have to be like, oh yeah, they've done some good things in the past. Yeah. Last show's having one around yet. Every every story starts somewhere. You need to stop being the sympathetic type and just, you know, <laughs> just, lighten I can't up a help bit. It. You I need have, to lighten up. I have a heart. And right now it is calling out for Lanchidos Epididos to pull one round against Elevate. You're just you're loony. Elevate is setting themselves up for more aggressive spawn peaks already. Agalina on no health. There they go. Just swing straight past and they get the opening frag. Tanisi finds Levi twice in a row. He's been the opening death, probably all fault of his own. Yeah, but he's just like the mini boss and here comes all the rest of them. He's literally there to kind of punch you up a little bit. And now everybody from Elevate just jumps on the old hype train and... Well, Lanchidos again. Uh, yeah, just that's the shake that sums them up. That's that's it. Look, this guy is called Clutch God. Yeah, no. Zoeo Clutch no. God, do it that's for me. False advertising. Look, lit their ashes on the rooftop with one HP. Yeah. Here comes the slow push. Two minutes on. Ash gets a second kill. Oh no, a first kill for the round, but the second kill for the team. Suffered a lot in the original firefight. In the meantime, the Clutch God has slowly crept through and is now the last one left in a one versus three. Gets one, brings it back to a one versus two, but obviously reveals location. The Diffuser, at this point, I'm not 100% sure if it's in or out the building, but it is over towards the southern side. So it is a big load of space as the <laughs> aim of the Clutch God. <laughs> Starts to get what a bit shaken up. Oh. Swings wide and puts bullets towards somewhere. Goes through the soft wall. Pulls out the rope pistol. But Elevate put themselves yet again on match point. I I kind of thought that how could they top the, the 7 on Clubhouse? Like, you know, because that went pretty quick. We've been in this, this match for like, what, 10, 15 minutes? It's not been long. I think it's been like literally 10 minutes. It's been a very quick evening so far. Um yeah. It's been it's been it's been fast. I think This is this was scheduled to have 3 hours allotted for this game. It took us an hour and we're just about to finish. Do you think they're saving strats? To say who Lanchard are saving strats yes. in a single elimination qualifier. Hmm, think not. I think they might be. I think Lanchard at this point. They're... Saving strats for what? <laughs> Only they know. Only Lanchard know. So they swap to their defense. Lanchard Bring in the Valkyrie, bring in the Mozzie, can play into aggressive information. Cleverly. I'm going to say, have bought the Capcan and the Ella for the rush that they know is going to happen. Okay. So they're thinking a little bit. Yeah, this was like their standard lineup in round two of Clubhouse. Yeah. Shows. I wouldn't say that this was like a new thing. This, this is just like their standard setup. They're responding well. 
Elevate in the meantime, bringing the single hard destruction. They've got the Ash with Diffuser, which I think is a little red flag for how this round is <laughs> going to be. Flag. How this round you is going to You think go. the Diffuser is going to get planted? I think you're they're going to try and rush the Diffuser in. I honestly think if Amaru was allowed, uh -huh. they would give Amaru the Diffuser and try and rush plant. No, I just think they're going to kill them all. Sledding IQ, doubling up the information as the Clutch God themselves sets up those Grismots outside and is ready to swing round on anyone that might show up. Agalina with the 9 and 19, trying to hold long angles but rotates off as we see some good droning work across the tension side on the hands of Elevate, making sure that they can't be caught unawares. Prefires around the corner as Zafia looks for the fight. Tanissi, who has otherwise got the opening frag twice in the previous rounds, uh, is still looking with a bit of aggression and a bit of swing now. And Elevate start to close down upon the point. Just waiting to see whenever Elevate want to uh, just push in and just just clear house, pretty much. And there is that Elamine that she did place backs off, so pretty redundant in what she's just done. Is you place that aggressive Elamine and then not peek it. Uh, and yeah, here comes Elevate with the kills, and honestly, I think Ella, yeah, is just gonna get cut out now, and... Honestly, Elevate are... Oh, I'm quite surprised they're taking this long. I thought this would have been done by now. Well, they're cracking open the wall. Did suffer the loss in the opening frag, as they've done a couple of times. Ella pushes aggressively, but falls a bit short. She suffers and Agalina at least finds one brings it to a 3-3 but here is the collapse and the pins are coming from either side a one versus three situation for Lanchados the final breath of fresh air is in the hands of Agalina but unfortunately they don't quite make it through a Cinderella story an underdog no, was, story. No, there is no story the there. The biggest Cinderella underdog story stop. we've ever seen comes stop, to stop, a dramatic stop, stop, end. Stop, 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 stop. You're living in fairyland. <laughs> yes. But, unfortunately, it comes to an end as Elevate.